Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. It's almost midnight time in our local time. And thank you for watching this clip on doing this integration of a squared plus x squared. This is one of the tedious, uh, most uh, frustrating integral I've ever experienced. If you type it onto the Wolfgram alpha, it gives you two forms. And for here, in the next few minutes, what we're going to do is concentrate on proving one form of this. Let me copy it down here. A squared natural log of, it's literally tedious, plus 1 and then plus x over a. Okay. Now the second form they gave you is utilize the hyperbolic sine function. After learning it in calculus class, I've not had any chance to use it anywhere else. But for completeness, we'll write it over here, but we'll focus on the first form only. Okay. All right. Let me copy everything here. So if, if you want to verify yourself, you can go to wolfgramalpha.com. All right, so what we're going to do is concentrate on the first one and not bother with the second one here. Okay. From here to here, you need to use hyperbo inverse hyperbolic function of x over a. All right, let's get started. dx over here. For whatever reason you are doing or required to do this one, my heart goes out to you. This one is one of the most hideous one I've ever encountered. So we're going to put a dx over here. I'm going to put an a squared out because I want to normalize it to make it easier for myself. Now a is going to come out and then dx over here and then I have 1 plus, I'm going to substitute it here, u equal to x over a, du is equal to 1 over a dx or dx is equal to a times du. It's just simple substitution over there. Then I have a squared du over here. No, I squared here. 1 plus u squared. Okay, so basically I'm going to be integrating square root of uh, 1 plus u in that form. And that form is going to scream out, hopefully by now, it's going to be a trig substitution. We have a theta over here. Let's see. I am going to have u over here and then 1 over here. 1 plus u squared is over here. Okay, now earlier I did the other way around. I didn't end up with a secant. Instead I end up with a cosecant. Cosecant is a pain but to work with so I choose to have the triangle look like this, not this way. All right. If you're more than welcome to try it. Anyway, so from here, I have radical root of 1 plus u squared is equal to secant theta. And then I need to find out what u is equal to tangent theta. So du is equal to secant squared d theta. Let's go back there. So I have a squared du is secant squared theta. Let's put a d theta over there. And then I have a secant theta. Okay, from here, it's a very famous, shall we say, or maybe notorious integral when you calculate the secant cubed. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a separate sheet to calculate the secant cube because it's pretty computation intensive. It's not hard, but just, just tedious, and you have to keep track of where each one of the steps is going. So let's get started. Let's do the secant cubed theta d theta. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute uh, by parts u equal to secant, then du is equal to secant tangent. So that's the easy part, d theta. 
and then I dv, of course, is uh, secant squared theta d theta. And this v is easy, that's a tangent of theta. So then this one I have uv, which is secant theta tangent theta minus v du, which is a little bit nastier. I have a secant theta tangent theta. Well, secant doesn't have squared, just the secant theta. And then tangent squared theta d theta. Okay, from here, I'm going to split this one up. So secant theta tangent theta. This is multiplication. Subtract. I'm going to split this one up. I have um, secant theta and then it's secant theta minus 1 d theta for the whole thing. So secant theta tangent theta. Oh yeah, tedious. Okay, minus secant theta d theta. That's one of them. And then I have, um, this is actually a plus sign, minus secant cubed again. Okay, this is important because on this side, remember I started with a secant cubed theta d theta. Okay, so combine this term with this term, I have twice of that, which is great. Sine, uh, not sine, secant cubed theta d theta is equal to, this part is already integrated, so copy it over here, and then plus secant theta d theta. I'm going to do some trick over here. I'm going to multiply by tangent theta plus secant theta. Now, I don't know who actually thought of this clever trick here. For sure, I didn't do that. Now, the reason we do that is if we have a v is equal to tangent theta, just the bottom variable, plus secant theta, lo and behold, our dv is equal to tangent theta on top, uh, actually this is secant theta, tangent theta plus, I'm uh, getting this one, it's secant theta squared plus tangent theta times secant theta. So, gotta, sorry for this mess over here. So, tangent theta d theta is secant squared. Okay, secant is tangent of theta. So dv is exactly what I have on top here. I don't know who figured that out. So secant theta, pull it out. I have secant theta plus tangent theta, the whole thing, d theta. Okay, so I have two secant cube theta d theta is equal to a nice one here. I have a secant theta tangent theta not plus let's put it in there. We have a dv on top and v on the bottom. Does not look pretty. Okay, so secant cube theta d theta is equal to half of secant theta tangent theta plus natural log of whatever v was. v was tangent theta plus secant theta. Oh boy, that's mouthful over here. Okay, so now having found a secant cubed, we can go back to our first page and substitute it in there. Okay, so back over here, that's going to equal to a squared. We have Found this whole thing is equal to half secant theta tangent theta, they're multiplying here, plus natural log of tangent theta plus secant theta. All right, the nightmare is almost over. Let's put the two out there, a square over two. Now let's go back to our little triangle here. Okay, so we have u here, 1, 1 plus u squared. And now remember u was in before when we substituted it was x over a. So we're going to put everything back in there. So I have 1 half here, I have 
radical root of a squared plus x squared over a times u over a. That's one of them plus a squared over 2 here, natural log of u over a plus a squared plus x squared over a. Oh boy. Okay. And then let's do one more step. I promise at the end of this. I have a a a squared over here. I'm just going to make it a half. Okay. And then I have u. Uh, what do I have u? This is x. This is x too. Okay. So I have x times radical root of a squared plus x squared. That's the first time. First term. That's complete. And then plus a squared over 2. Natural log of what a mess here. x over a plus a over x squared plus a squared. Now, as I said earlier before, this part is the hyperbolic sign. Since uh, we're not dealing with hyperbolic sign, or at least I don't like it, so I'm just going to leave it alone there. Let's check it. It's half x a squared plus x and then plus a squared over 2 natural log of uh, x plus a plus 1, x plus 1. All right, I got exactly what I had before checking from the, on the computer, uh, plus a constant here. All right, hopefully this is clear, and uh, leave any comments you have, and uh, tell me if you liked it or if it's clear enough for you. Until next time, have a confident day.